The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and welcome to the New York State Association of Counties or NISAC uh, Albany update. This is Stephen Aquario, your executive director uh, in Albany County, New York, uh, where the state capital is and uh, the great county executive of Albany County, Daniel McCoy. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the state controller, Thomas DiNapoli, and the entire office of the uh, state controller for all that they do um, to protect New Yorkers, to ensure the integrity of, of public programs and the financing of public programs. Uh, and in this particular instance, I'd like to thank uh, the office of the, uh, the state controller, uh, Tracy Boyd, Elliot Auerbach, Dan Aquilana and, and just, just all the great staff at the office for making this virtual uh, continuing professional education credit program possible. Uh, please note uh, that this recording uh, uh, will, be, uh, will be posted. All the slides that you'll see here will be on the NYSAC website uh, at nysac.org forward slash webinars later this afternoon for your reference. And for those of you that uh, require or need or desire to have the CPE credits, uh, please note that you must answer three questions, and there are poll questions which will pop up on your screen just to ensure and substantiate your attendance throughout the webinar. You have 10 seconds. That's right, 10 seconds to click yes or no to answer that question. So don't forget to answer that question following the conclusion of this webinar uh, that you'll need to complete to get your CPE credits. Uh, should you have uh, any questions during the program, uh, you can send them in by way of the dashboard under the questions tab. And uh, we'll try to take some of those questions or I'll try to take some of those questions. Uh, if you have questions for the Office of the State Controller, Mr. Auerbach will be giving a telephone number as well as an email where you could submit those questions. Um, this is the Albany update, which is traditionally held at the NYSEC County Finance School uh, each year that's held in May in Syracuse, New York. Of course, we had to cancel that uh, because of the COVID-19 virus. Uh, but this session uh, is, uh, is a joint session of the uh, State Controller's Office, the County Treasurers and Finance Officers Association, and the Association of Counties. Uh, uh, it doesn't replace a solid in-person conference uh, that includes the critical networking and opportunities, but this is the next best thing that we could do. It's designed to give you an update from the state capital, uh, from a unique county fiscal point of view. We packed a lot into this update today. It'll be a jam-packed hour, a host of things that we'll go through. Uh, and, and in particular, this session is sponsored by the Alera Group, and I wanted to give them a quick shout out. We've been working with the Alera Group for a number of years. We have now created the Municipal Healthcare Financing Collective to help counties save healthcare costs through a new stop loss collective. So this allows counties to purchase stop loss insurance uh, for their health insurance. Uh, one of our first meetings was held during the finance school a couple of years ago, but now that this uh, Municipal Healthcare Finance Company, a corporation collective rather is up and running, we have three counties in it. It's open to any self-insured counties that want to reduce your medical plan costs in your 21 budgets. Uh, it's a proven public sector collaborative stop loss program, enables municipalities to work together to get back unused stop loss premium dollars and reduce high cost claimant volatility and prevent future cost increases. I'm very pleased uh, with the creation of this and you may contact Eric Lintella at the Alera Group on your screen right there. But first off at today's session, I want to introduce our first panelist is Mr. Elliot Auerbach. Elliot is the Deputy State Controller for Local Government and School Accountability. Elliot is not new to this group. He's attended a number of these forums over the years, first elected uh, as the first elected County Controller for Ulster County. He served in that capacity for a number of years. He's an incredible resource for the county officials uh, for us now uh, as the Deputy Controller uh, for Local Government and School accountability for the Office of the State Controller. 
And I can tell you firsthand, there's not many people like Elliot with the rich history that he has in county government. He remembers what it's like to lead a county government and he remembers uh, what it's like to participate through the Association of Counties and the County Treasurer's Association. I'm very pleased uh, to introduce our friend and colleague, Mr. Elliot Auerbach. Elliot. Well, good morning, Steve. Thank you. Thank, thank you and good, mo good morning, um, everyone. Um, you know, it's, it's the Albany update, but I'm coming to you from the Hudson Valley, which uh, is, shows how interesting uh, life has been. Um, you know, just imagine we're in Doc Brown's DeLorean and Back to the Future, and we're back at NYSAC school at the Sheridan in Syracuse, and there are several county finance officers relaxing in a lounge after a uh, tough day of sessions. But actually, it's the present, and we've been hunkered down for the past 100 days. Some of us thought about locking our kids in the basement. Uh, we're sorry that we didn't build that pool that we talked about. And we wish we had a lounge to sit in. Times have changed, but the one constant is your association and the advocacy that they bring on your behalf. So a special thanks to the NYSAC team, to Steve, to Mark, to Dave, to Jeanette, and to all the NYSAC staff that assist members every day. And, and speaking about assisting, it's been the mission of the Comptroller's Office to provide you with the help you need to navigate through these turbulent times. Uh, Comptroller DiNapoli has been virtually uh, traveling the state, participating in a variety of online and live county events that have taken him from Otsego to Dutchess, from Schoharie to Westchester, from Ulster to Monroe. Comptroller DiNapoli has updated the website to include COVID information so that we can quickly respond to your latest issues and concerns. He submitted legislation that will provide counties with some financial relief, and he has been understanding when it comes to filing deadlines and AUD submissions. He has listened to you, spoken with you, and showed you that OSC is open for business to work with you and give you the tools and guidance that you will need. Here's what I'd like to talk to you about today. Um, it should come as no surprise that it starts with that five letter C word, which has become part of our lexicon. We just are about to release a report on revenue impacts affecting counties and other local governments. And I'll be discussing many of the things we wrote about. In addition, I'll talk about the state enacted budget and the effect on counties that you should be aware of. I'll provide you details about a bill being sponsored by the controller which has the potential of really helping local, go local governments at this time. I'll also talk to you about our OSC resources, the fiscal stress monitoring system, audits, and some other tools county officials might be able to leverage in this environment. And while questions are encouraged, I'll provide you with an email and a phone number so that we can answer each one of you on a personal basis. So let's get started. To call COVID-19 the elephant in the room wouldn't be giving it nearly enough credit. It's more like Jumanji scene where Robin Williams witnesses the elephant stampede, then the rhino stampede, and then the zebra stampede. Well, you get the point. It colors everything we talk about lately, and of course it will dominate today's presentation. Um, in my career, there has not been something that has touched each and every person across county, state, country, and globe the way this virus has. It hits on multiple levels, public health, education, labor, finance, and yes, county government. And while we're starting to understand, analyze, and hypothesize what has happened over the last few months, it's obviously not over and it won't be for quite some time. Actions to contain the COVID-19 pandemic in New York State shuttered non-essential businesses, restricted travel, and caused numbers of displaced workers to apply for unemployment insurance. It reintroduced 2010 Great Recession terms like layoffs, furloughs, job sharing, and retirement incentives. The longer-term economic implications of these changes depend on many unknown factors, including the length of the pandemic and the scope and structure of federal policies enacted 
the backstop losses being experienced by residents. In April, the team and I had a conversation with the leaders of local government and school district associations to get a sense of how they were affected and how we could help. We saw some very clear themes. We will be releasing a research brief on the revenue impacts of COVID-19 for local governments and school districts in the next few days. While this report represents an analysis of those impacts, it also includes information about the state budget and federal aid. I'm going to talk to you about some things we covered in the report, and we'll try and keep the conversation focused specifically on counties. This won't come as a surprise to you. Counties relied heavily on sales tax revenue. Using 2018 as an example, sales tax was responsible for over a quarter of the total revenue mix. And, and what was a major result of the pandemic? The shuttering of businesses, restaurants, malls, movie theaters, a drop in gas consumption and prices, and the withering of tourism, all translating into the loss of all of that sales tax revenue. While villages, towns, and cities may have felt the pain, as far as counties go, I'll rely on the 2003 Cheryl Crow song to define the impact on all of you at county government. The first cut is the deepest. We took, we took a look at the difference between how much sales tax revenue has been affected in COVID-19. I'm not telling you anything that you have not already seen. January and February saw big growth. In March, New York City started feeling the pressure and it pulls the statewide numbers into a negative territory. Come April and May, along with 24 and 32% year over year drop, we see that the sales tax declines are both widespread and severe, occurring in nearly every county in every part of the state. What do, the, what do these percentage drops mean in numbers? Well, in March, it was 60 million. In April, it was 327 million. And in May, it was 437 million. Three months, $824 million, or a 19% less drop than last year. These numbers are shocking, but they are not surprising. It's a reflection of how we lived these past three months. So if you go to our website, we have released a report this past Friday, which will show county level data. And speaking of change, last year the state started using withholdings from sales tax collections to fund payments to towns and villages, which used to receive aid and incentives for municipalities. This was written into the state budget and is now in state finance law. The withholdings of these AIM payments take place in May and December and of each year, and our, the withhold funds are $59 million that go to over 1,300 towns and villages. Uh, local government and school accountability was handed the responsibility for intercepting these funds and for making those payments in each December and May. But that's not all. The Department of Budget also employed the sales tax withholding model in this year's budget as well. This time, the withholdings called distressed provider assistance will be $50 million a year for two years and will go to benefit COVID-19 impacted hospitals and nursing homes. Let's take a closer look. Well, this is already effective. The 2020 withholdings are deferred until January 2021. Then there will be four smaller withholdings in April, July, October of 2021 and in January of 2022. I encourage you to go to our website to see the amounts withheld. Next slide, please. As I said earlier, this is a major economic downturn, but on top of that, it's nothing we've ever seen before 
and it doesn't fit into what past recessions have looked like. A number of regions have entered the third phase of the reopening last week. This week, Western New York and the Capital Region will enter phase three. The Mid-Hudson and Long Island are in phase two and New York City in phase one. But reopening does not bring with it a single switch that turns everything back on. The benefits of reopening will take time to be realized. There are businesses which have furloughed employ employees and hopefully those people will come back. There are others which had to have major layoffs and there are many businesses which have for been forced to close permanently because of COVID-19. The enacted state budget anticipates a 15 and a half percent drop in state sales tax collections for the period April 20 to March 2021. The numbers will be worse for counties because of both the decline in the gas tax as well as the occupancy tax. And while that's all bad news, last year lawmakers expanded sales tax collection for online purchases thanks to the efforts of NISAC, and that's good news. And it's my understanding that the data behind this will be made available to both OSC and NISAC in the not too distant future. With reopening, we will see increases in sales tax collection, but we must be conservative in how quickly we think those improvements will come to fruition. Next slide, please. The other revenue impacted by COVID, but in different ways are property tax revenues. They were responsible for almost a quarter of county revenues in 2018, translating into 5.8 billion with a B dollars. Generally, it is one of the most stable revenue streams, but in this environment, there's no guarantee and there are real risks for counties. First county risk here is magnified because in many cases, you are responsible for making school districts and other local governments whole for unpaid property taxes. Additionally, longer term economic damage, such as proliferation of vacant, abandoned residential and commercial properties could have a negative impact on property values, eroding the property tax base in affected municipalities. And we know when the property tax base is affected, raising taxes to make up the shortfall is less of an option than it used to be. Compound that with the two restrictive initiatives that end in the word limits, like in property tax cap limit and constitutional tax limit. And you quickly realize that those limits present a real issue for your total levy. The number of municipalities for which the constitutional tax limit plays a role in budgeting has been increasing in recent years. And those were years when the economy was doing better than it is now. Unlike the property tax cap, the constitutional tax limit can't be overridden. If you levy more than your constitutional tax limit, we at LGSA and OSC are required to withhold state aid. So it's a real concern for places that are close and have property values moving in the wrong direction. Next slide, please. Thank you. And if it couldn't get any more challenging and unpredictable, the state enacted budget gave the director of budget authority to reduce your payments at certain times during the course of the year if certain state revenues aren't hit. Next slide, please. Okay, so what's being done to help struggling local governments at the federal level? Not enough. And you have heard Comptroller DiNapoli publicly state that federal intervention is needed to bring back the economy. Our state is suffering, and in turn, it is sharing that pain with you, the counties, and other local governments and school districts. Now, there has been some federal aid, the biggest of which is the Coronavirus Relief Fund, paying $7.5 billion to New York State and local governments 
with 819 million of those dollars going to the five largest counties. This funding is to be used to cover the cost of necessary expenditures incurred due to the COVID-19 public health emergency from March 2020 to April 30th, 2020. These funds were dispersed in late April. Additional federal funding, funding is likely, but has not yet materialized. Controller DiNapoli has been proactively working on legislation that will help governments during this time, and it will help you reorganize and provide some cash flow for short-term short operations. Next slide, please. So here are the, here are the details. Um, it is the first uh, of uh, the first of a relief bill um, that would be signed into law that takes a three-tiered approach to access internal operating funds while avoiding further market debt. And you can see that we've extended the uh, ban rollover period. Um, we've created an opportunity for you to access uh, reserve funds. And we have also addressed the payback of some interfund transfers. And speaking of Albany changes, I would be remiss if I didn't share this reform with all of you. And as you can see, we're still awaiting the guidelines on it. How else can we help? Well, to begin with, our website has been updated recently. And while most things are in the places you would expect them to be, there have been some changes. If you can't find something you're looking for, you should definitely contact us, but I encourage you to check out our website and its new and improved form. Again, this year, as part of our annual report, we released a set of fully interactive dashboards that allow you to dive into the details of the data for an individual local government. We have an interactive dashboard on our website for each city, county, town, village, and school district. These sheets have multiple tabs so that users can see revenue, expenditures, and debt details, and also toggle to different years to view different time periods. We continue our early warning fiscal stress monitoring system. I like to equate this as the smoke alarm on your ceiling. If it doesn't beep, you're in good shape. But as those beeps intensify, it certainly sends you a warning. And the good news is we will work with you to ensure your financial safety. Not only are we paying attention but so are many of you, as is evident by the efforts made recently. We want to help continue, help you continue to de-stress. So reach out to us if you're having a problem. And I would say at the end of this webinar, I will provide you with some phone numbers and some email addresses. Do it today. Like you, we continue to adapt. As you know, we have auditors all around the state in seven regions and typically do 300 to 400 audits per year. This year, our world, much like your world, is looking a little different. No, that doesn't mean less audits, but it means leveraging technology and working alongside you as we both reinvent ourselves. It means continuing our strong commitment to helping you obtain the knowledge that you need to do your job. It means a training unit that works hard 
throughout the year to put together programs that will meet your needs. It means more webinars, a virtual accounting school, YouTube training videos for you and your staff, and listening to you so that we can meet your needs together. Finally, to wrap, wrap it up, we want you to know that we have a wealth of information to help you do your job effectively. From fiscal stress to tax caps, from management guides to accounting updates. You can download our various reports, including research reports and audits. You can access data in real time via Open Book New York. You can view our management guides and accounting advisory. You can find out about and sign up for training programs that are being offered around the state, and you can also sign up for upcoming webinars or watch previously held webinars, which are available on demand. And feel free to contact us. And I know that this is up there with phone numbers and email addresses, but let me share uh, two other forms of contact with you. And if you have a pencil, please write them down. Contact me directly if you have any questions. My email address is a simple one. It's my name. It's E Auerbach, E A U E R B A C H, E Auerbach at osc.ny.gov. Or better yet, give me a call. Here's my cell phone number 518 424 2363. I look forward to hearing from you. Okay, Elliot, Deputy Controller, our back. Uh, I'd like to uh, commend you as well uh, and thank you for the and the State Controller to thank him for the constant partnership. Uh, and I would encourage. Here we go. Let's get that. Let's get that poll answered. If you need these credits, thank you very much. Uh, for doing that. But I want to thank Elliot uh, and Tracy Boyd and Dan Aquilana, uh, Aquilano and everybody uh, at the Office of the State Controller. Uh, please take advantage of Elliot's um, email and offer to help with questions and answers. Uh, they're just terrific and they will get back to you on, uh, on your questions. So let's, let's go. Uh, we've got about a half hour uh, remaining here and we'll try to get through on page 32 here, uh, the slides um, uh, that you see on the, uh, on the uh, screen, this sort of an agenda, really uncertain fiscal times. Uh, talk a little bit about the state budget outcomes. Some of it you may know already, so it might be a refresher. Talk a little bit about end of session highlights. Uh, you know, maybe uh, amplify a little bit about what Elliot mentioned about the economic impact of counties resulting from COVID, uh, but uh, also uh, property tax cap, uh, some estimates as we go forward into the future. And again, just a reference on some pension costs for 21, and then finally uh, some federal stimulus uh, proposals. So if we could go to the next slide. Uh, and before I, you know, I get into this, you know, it is a world of fact checking. So we're gonna fact check uh, Mr. Auerbach here a little bit. We have a flag that was thrown on one of the comments that was made by in an official capacity uh, in the Office of the State Controller. And that was the reference of the first cut is the deepest. We are now taking reports, Elliot, that that was in fact a 1967 Cat Stevens song. And while I may be, uh, indicating my age with that reference. Uh, it was sung, of course, in 2003 by Sheryl Crow. But we wanted to uh, set that record straight, and I thank uh, one of our listeners who are really paying attention here uh, to sending that in. So Elliot just wanted to make sure for the record we had that straightened out. Thank you. Thank you, Elliot. So um, I, I also want to thank everybody uh, a lot of what Elliot may have talked about and sort of the things that I'm talking about now, you know, it's kind of doom and gloom stuff. This is this is tough. This is tough stuff to go through. This is not something that's a casual conversation. This is a, a 
very serious time in our nation's history, in the history of our state, but really in the history of our uh, county financing. Um, and I, I just wanted to say that um, we don't mean to be delivering all this sort of uh, awkwardly bad news, uh, but we feel it's necessary to prepare you. Uh, this is a very serious professional fiduciary responsibility that you all uh, and we all have chosen to work in on behalf of the taxpayers. And it's, it's unfortunate to not have uh, a lot of good news to talk about as we go through today's Albany update or the Hudson Valley update. Uh, but really, uh, I did want to say that um, we're going to get through this. We always manage to get through these crises, crises um, and we're going to get through the COVID crisis as well. And it's just how we go through that from the public health side and the economic side that's really going to make a difference. So I did want to encourage all of you to keep that in perspective. Uh, keep talking with each other because uh, through that kind of conversation, we can keep everybody's morale up as we go through this very difficult uh, time in our life. And, uh, you know, I also wanted to mention it's not on these slides before I start talking through these slides is, you know, it might be worthwhile to start um, uh, reducing across the board expenditures, uh, all not for profits, 15% across the board cuts uh, to everybody. Cornell Cooperative Extensions, your not-for-profit providers. Uh, we are seeing reports from the counties that are beginning to uh, put in place these measures uh, to do across the board cuts. So I did wanna uh, put that out there um, before I started going through these slides as, as one thing you might wanna start thinking about. But really this slide talks about the unprecedented times, it creates very much uncertainty, the size of the state budget deficit ballooning to 60, billion over four years. That's just a number. That's just not even something to uh, comprehend. It's so large. Uh, and the county correlation of two billion, uh, really, next slide, uh, is just, you know, uh, it's just these numbers are so big and so difficult to comprehend that uh, it, it's, it's just hard to fathom, um, you know, uh, really how we're going to manage through this. But really, the revenue losses are, are just the beginning the slide is talking about, uh, you know, we are tracking a 30 to 40 percent loss year over year at this time when it should have been a two or three or four percent growth. Let me repeat that. We are we should have been going and looking at a two, three, four percent growth in sales tax. And yet instead, in this particular three month window, two months of closure data in were 30, 26, 35 percent, uh, some higher uh, reduction. So uh, that is uh, very devastating alone. But here we're going to see mid-year state cuts and state aid reimbursement delays. And we're taking uh, calls right now from the counties about the delays in cash flow that we're seeing. Um, and uh, the governor, of course, mentioning should the federal government not provide fiscal relief that um, you know uh, he's going to do a 20 percent across the board uh, cut so um, we, we just have to uh, uh, understand that the revenue loss is just the beginning uh, that the counties uh, experienced immediate and lasting increased spending needs to address public health and social welfare emergencies cash flow is very tight right now on some of the social service programs uh we are uh you know some of the federal assistance may take months to catch up but higher costs will carry over into future years and the loss of investment returns in the state retirement fund and state aid cuts will lead to increased county costs for years uh, while the great recession was a different economic shock county retirement costs tripled in the years that followed due to the losses in the retirement fund and state aid cuts were made permanent and many of us that are listening remember that. So while I hope their county retirement costs uh, do not triple over the next couple of years, uh, we are just putting a, a placeholder there. Next slide, please. Uh, so this slide talks about the new executive authority to cut spending. This is how the governor uh, is, is positioning uh, the state uh, to do across the board cuts uniformly. 
across the board. Of course, if uh, um, the, if, the, if the number starts going above 20% for counties, that would mean that he's exempting more health and education related costs. But if the number stays around 20%, that would mean that uh, health and education also are receiving the cuts. But we're very pleased that the CHIPS numbers were released. We had pushed for the state to uh, give us some idea about local highway funding, PAVE New York, uh, Bridge New York, uh, and uh, we're still waiting for some other funds to come in uh, to get uh, some indication, uh, but there is a caveat that those funds could be cut by up to 20% as well. Next slide. So in 18, the counties received about $3 billion in state reimbursements. Um, this slide just shows you uh, what that would mean uh, if, the, if the state were to uh, cut across the board 20%. We're looking at 600 million in reductions. Uh, and Dave uh, Lucas, I'm not sure if that includes New York City or if that's outside of New York City. Next slide. Um, actual, uh, this slide talks about, uh, again, the executive authority to cut spending. Uh, this was in the state budget, just to shows what the, uh, what has to happen, uh, that if the, uh, that if the revenue is off, um, they, they can make those cuts, but then they could add them back uh, should the federal government provide sufficient aid to reduce or eliminate that imbalance that exists in the state budget. Uh, next slide. These slides talk about um, the various agencies. Uh, I'm not gonna go through each individual one, I'll just gloss over them. But it talks about some of the funding uh, that is um, uh, uh, included in the state budget. We really never got a chance to talk about the end of the state budget and all the great work that the counties and NISAC was able to achieve throughout the state budget process. But these here uh, talk about um, uh, the various agencies uh, and the appropriations that are in them. Uh, next slide, Janet. Again, these slides will be made available. Uh, here's uh, children with special needs, community colleges. Uh, we are working with the State University of New York on community college funding and trying to get an accelerated indication of community college chargebacks. Uh, this slide here, talking about economic development, what was included for economic development, uh, the 10th round of the REDC awards, uh, money for the downtown revitalization initiatives. A note here that prevailing wages was included on certain private construction projects with at least 30% of the funds where that project cost exceeds 5 million. Uh, we just wanted to flag that issue for you. Elections, uh, no new additional monies for early voting. Um, time off to vote for clarification. There was a change uh, in, uh, in how uh, individuals could use leave time uh, for voting. So we did want to flag that. Uh, next slide. Environment and Energy, uh, a $3 billion uh, Restore Mother Nature Bond Act was approved and that will go to the voters. Subject to the voter approval, there was funds put in for clean water infrastructure, uh, $300 million for the Environmental Protection Fund, a bans on styrofoam product, products, single use and packaging and energy uh, creates the Office of Renewable Energy Siting within the Department of State. We flagged this because this would require permittees to provide a host community benefit uh, pilots to be negotiated by localities, but the state of New York now going to be involved in the siting of a renewable energy uh, project uh, within the uh, state of New York that used to be predominantly a local government town, village, city, county issue. That issue now being taken over by the state of New York through the new Renewable Energy Siting Office uh, with some degree of local government input, but a one-year decision on that siting permit process. We did want to flag that because that seems to have been lost in the shuffle. Uh, gaming VLTA, VLTA uh, not much change was made. We tried to get mobile betting uh, authorized uh, to work with the casinos, but 
there is some uh, argument made by certain officials at the state level that it's not constitutional. Uh, so the budget did change the law slightly to allow sports bets to be made anywhere from inside a casino. Uh, it was limited to a sports wagering lounge. Uh, so that one change was made. Uh, VLT aid was continued uh, in, in, the, in the current budget. For those of you in Western New York, we continue to work with the state on the Seneca Gaming Compact uh, to see when we can get a better timing of when those payments can and should be made by the Seneca Nation to the state and to the local governments. Human services that was included in, in the budget, a number of different categories here. You could see uh, uh, the funding categories here. All these slides that I'm talking about, the top of the slide reminds us all that it's all subject to a reduction. The state legislature has delegated its budget appropriation authority to the governor, uh, and that delegation included the authority to reduce the amount at his discretion uh, up and uh, if the budget is in balance, uh, out of balance uh, with revenues versus expenditures. So all these things, while they were included in the budget, again, are subject to uh, state uh, governor executive authority to reduce. Uh, next slide. 150 million uh, for indigent legal services. Uh, this is exempt from the across the board budget cuts. So we did want you to at least have some degree of certainty as this is tied to a judicial settlement. Uh, next slide. Medicaid. Uh, we haven't really had a chance to talk an awful lot about Medicaid, but we were able to work with our governor and work with the state legislature on reversing uh, a very serious change that could have cost uh, the counties in New York City more than $1 billion, again, more than $1 billion every year from these proposals over time. Uh, defeating these proposals pre preserve the current Medicaid cost growth caps that we have achieved in 2005 and 2012. All of them were rejected, uh, but it is, again, a very serious uh, Medicaid proposal that was uh, offered and submitted. Again, there's a reminder for those of you that need the CPE credits to quickly fill out that slide. But the governor's budget proposal authorized the governor to intercept enhanced federal Medicaid matching funds that were due to the counties. That was all rejected here. Uh, very, very, very historic year 2020 uh, in the budget for counties. And I'm very grateful for uh, our governor and for the state legislature for reorganizing uh, that. Next slide, please. Uh, and so um, this slide talking about, um, as Deputy Comptroller Auerbach mentioned, the diversion of county uh, sales tax. Uh, it's not really internet sales tax that's been diverted. It's simply sales tax. And so this chart here shows you what that means for your county. So if you're listening uh, from uh, Nassau County, uh, that's about uh, 7 million uh, intercepted. If you're listening from Albany, it's about 1.6 million. Uh, if you're listening from Westchester, it's about 3.5 million. So some of the numbers are, are, are fairly large. Uh, even in Shenango, one of our rural counties, uh, you can see that number, 143,000. That's certainly an awful lot when you're looking at a year uh, when our sales tax decline was as dramatic as it was, 30 to 40 percent decreased, yet the state's still intercepting uh, this money. Uh, it's very insulting. Uh, Erie County, almost 5 million coming out of there. Uh, it's very insulting to lose 200,000 in a small rural county like Essex County in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic uh, with no requirement that it actually be used for a distressed hospital or a distressed nursing home. Next slide, please. So the final budget here does accept the new COVID-19 uh, federal stimulus uh, FMAP monies. So uh, we wanted to, um, report to you that they they did uh, accept the money in the budget. There's broad authority to accept that money in the state budget. 
We now know that the state of New York has received 2.5 billion of this COVID-19 funding uh, that is retroactive to January 1 and that runs through June 30th. Now, it's very important for us to keep in mind for the next 12 days, we have to watch the federal government and the actions of the White House. If the White House, the President of the United States, declares the coronavirus COVID emergency order is over with, and he just today made an announcement about masks wearing in the, uh, uh, the press room are no longer necessary, but if he changes the coronavirus outbreak executive order, uh, meaning the emergency is, is no longer in place in the United States, uh, the, the COVID-19 second quarter would disappear. So we need to get through the end of June. And once we're through June 30th, uh, we now know that 2.5 billion has already been received by the state of New York. Uh, and so um, uh, we, that money is owed to the counties and we do anticipate um, about 20% of that is owed to the counties. Uh, we are expecting those FMAP monies likely to be not distributed for those of you that are doing cash flow, not to be distributed in a lump sum. Uh, if that is important to you, you should write to the governor and ask the state to give a lump sum retroactive to January 1st through June 30th. You are entitled to a lump sum uh, advance, uh, which would help the counties, especially Nassau and Suffolk. Uh, who are in de desires of uh, cash flow uh, severity issues on Long Island, uh, but it is more likely that the governor is going to do a weekly share adjustment. What does that mean? Each week we send to Albany through an ACH transfer, a Medicaid payment. That payment is likely to be uh, reduced by 6.2%, uh, if I understand that correctly, Dave Lucas. Yes, that's correct. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, next slide here is public health. Uh, this talks about uh, 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 effective June of this year, a ban on flavored vape, vape products. Uh, in, in, in two weeks, uh, just wanted to remind everyone that uh, uh, certain uh, uh, tobacco control policies will become effective, prohibiting uh, the vapes in the sale of pharmacies. Uh, price reduction instruments become effective in July uh, 1st, increased fines for tobe sell selling tobacco products to underage purchasers, and a prohibition on advertising near schools. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide talks about the implementation of bail reform and discovery reform. Uh, authorization for regional jails was rejected. Um, uh, Jail-based restoration programs uh, for county jails was rejected in the state budget. Uh, we have also recently uh, had legislation introduced by uh, Assemblywoman Dee Dee Barrett uh, in, out of Ulster and Dutchess counties, where um, uh, would give the counties the ability and the authority to work with the sheriff uh, and the chief elected of the county to adjust and implement staffing ratios within county jails. We have been taking reports around the state of uh, jail population declines due to bail reform and discovery reform and, and uh, uh, really the change with appearance tickets uh, and rather than bail being imposed uh, and individuals being sent to county jails, uh, the population census has declined uh, almost dramatically with jail populations under 40% capacity right now uh, and certainly with the criminal justice movement that's underway, that number could even decline further. Well, there should be corresponding authority for local governments to staff their jails as they see fit to meet the needs. So I would encourage you, uh, if you're looking for a letter that we have wrote to the governor about this, uh, you can just uh, email NISAC uh, at coronavirus at nisac.org, coronavirus at nisac.org, and we can share with you a copy of the letter that was written uh, to the governor, uh, asking for some flexibility. Uh, this next slide 
uh, talks about transportation. We've talked about this. Uh, there was an amount that was distributed uh, uh, already with a caveat that it could be excluded. 20% uh, could be excluded. These are the numbers. Um, Paved New York, extreme winter recovery was included. So what you budgeted last year, uh, what you got in Paved New York last year, uh, that was uh, 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 something to also keep in mind, the CHIPS bidding threshold for you to use in-house uh, force accounts uh, went up from 250,000 to 350,000. So if you wanna use your own employees on certain jobs, those bidding thresholds increased from 250 to 350. So for projects under 350 now, we could use our own in-house uh, labor. Uh, to do those jobs. Um, uh, those are the uh, updates in transportation. Veterans uh, here, um, just showing a chart of the Dwyer County Awards. For those of you that get those awards, we put that out there uh, for you to see. Um, and uh, um, that's about it for that uh, particular section. This here sort of end of session highlights here, a couple of things that they did at the end. Um, they did a, a public employee death benefit, uh, provides protections for the statutory beneficiaries of public employees who died of COVID-19 after working in person on or after March 1, 2020, or within 45 days after December 31st of 2020. So it does stretch into next year, a real property tax uh, bill allowing a local tax jurisdiction to defer property taxes due to COVID-19 pandemic or separate property taxes into as many installment payments as necessary without liability uh, to the county. That is a disastrous bill. Uh, and uh, we have strongly urged a veto of this bill uh, as it could cause total chaos uh, with certain towns uh, who do the uh, tax collections and tax notifications uh, to the taxpayers. Uh, the, Taxpayer could get confused if the county did not want to do or was not in a position to defer property taxes, but yet all the towns uh, were in a position due to reserves, and then the taxpayer would be totally confused, and then who would collect the tax, and then doing the re-levy, re and then bumping up against the school taxes at this stage of the game. It's a disastrous bill, and we hope that it gets vetoed. We have worked strongly. Uh, also, an early retirement incentive bill uh, was uh, introduced uh, over the last two weeks. We did want to just reference that uh, to you, that there was an early retirement incentive bill introduced uh, by two Westchester County um, uh, legislators out of Westchester County, uh, Abenanti in the Assembly and uh, Harkham in the Senate. I don't have the bill numbers, uh, but there was an early retirement incentive. Basically, 25 year, uh, 55 years old uh, would be eligible during a certain window through the rest of the year. Uh, this last couple of slides in the next three minutes, uh, I'll have Dave Lucas go through. Uh, Dave, if you could just talk about in two minutes, uh, the economic impact on counties, the report that we have Maybe you could direct uh, the attention to this report. Maybe you could go to slide 61, Jeanette. Uh, if you go to slide 61, uh, and Dave, you could talk about this slide, maybe direct folks to where the economic impact report is on our website, but maybe you could take the rest of the slide deck from here, Dave, and just talk about a couple of things that you want in the next three minutes. Sure, no problem. Um, it is, we have an economic impact report on the report or on our website and it's under the COVID links uh, and there's a, a resource tab there that says uh, reports. So you can go there and it shows the data. This slide just kind of reiterates what uh, Elliot was talking about earlier about the drop in sales tax. Uh, it's pretty dramatic because you look at the dollar amounts but you also look at the ranges by county. So in April, the county could have been down 18% or up to 40%, and that's before any deferrals happened. Um, and then in May, there was one county that was positive and someone else was down around 41%. So it's a pretty wide range in the impacts. Next slide, please. Here, this is, we're looking at other sources to kind of verify um, 
what's happening in the retail sector. And this is basically data for May, April, and March from the Census Bureau about different categories. And we've often talked about the NAICS categories and where counties get their sales tax. And if you look on this chart, that far column, it shows the, the top ranking for the 57 counties out of New York City. This is the average of where these, these um, categories fall. You know, auto sales, gasoline, general merchandise, um, clothing, furniture, you know, like electronics. Some of these things, they're pretty big sources of sales tax, and you can see how much they've dropped off each month. Um, next slide, please. Again, here's another tool, Google Mobility. If you voluntarily allow Google to track your cell phone, it knows where you're going. So they've broken down different sectors and they track them. So they have a retail and recreation sector where they actually see if people are going to restaurants and bars and movie theaters and other places like that. And this chart here shows, this is for the state of New York, you know, in the middle of April, we're, we're in lockdown at that point, you can see we're down 60% in visits to these types of establishments. And it, it's letting up a little bit by the end of May because we started our gradual reopening. Next. Here's another resource, Edmonds Automotive. Um, some of the major US car companies don't do monthly reporting on sales volume anymore. They've switched to quarterly, so Edmonds is out there. And you'll see here a huge resource of sales tax for most counties. March down 35% in sales volume, 52% in April, 33% in May. Uh, this data is a little different than what the Census Bureau data is, but the Census Bureau is measuring dollars. This is measuring uh, volume. Next slide. Uh, oh, quickly on property tax cap. Um, inflation fell through the floor since COVID started, and we're estimating at this time, is that the synopsis of this slide is that the property tax inflation factor for 2021 for counties is going to be around 1.5%. Uh, next slide. Again, here, pensions. Um, this is strictly a NYSEC viewpoint. I'm going to completely defer to the comptroller when they go through all their numbers and see where they are. Um, this, We do expect pension costs to increase next year, uh, just based on what happened uh, in the stock market. We don't know what the, the portfolio return was for the um, Common Retirement Fund yet, but we are anticipating that it drops somewhat. Um, and the, the, the state uses a five-year rolling average of returns, and uh, we think that's going to drop significantly compared to where we were last year on that five-year average. Um, so the average last year was a 14.6% contribution rate. That's an average. It varies for every, but we think that's going to go up. Um, and as a reminder to folks under the property tax cap, there is a trigger if pension costs rise more than two percentage points. And I think we could be in a situation where that might happen this year. So we could be in a situation where the, the contribution rate is above 16.6%, um, but it's not clear yet. That'll be, that information will come out later in the summer. Uh, next. Uh, and the, the last part of these slides, I'm not gonna go through them in detail. It's, it's just the, the federal bills that have been out there. Um, the follow-up slides beyond this talk about where NACO and the counties have been in strategy. Basically, we're asking in the fifth package that money is provided directly to counties across the country of all sizes, um, and that it be significant to help out with the revenue losses we've demonstrated. At that point, I think we're open for questions. Okay, the last thing I want to say is on the HEROES Act here. This provided, uh, if you could see there, $187 billion for counties across the United States. I mean, that was exactly what we want, of course, and it includes so many things. You could see that FMAP increase in there and just how important that was to go to 14%. But the likelihood of that becoming a law is really not reality. I, I think the uh, likelihood is something more of a 30 to $50 billion uh, county uh, pot of money uh, nationally, of course. And then um, it would be distributed to the states. It may or may not include a rate of infection. Uh, and so uh, that would, of course, uh, based on population and perhaps a rate of infection 
which would uh, uh, benefit the state of New York, uh, unfortunately, because we had such a high rate infection. But uh, we are anticipating this almost into August now. We don't think that this is something in the next six to eight weeks that is going to happen. Uh, we are, of course, pressing for it every single day, uh, but we are now projecting that that could go into August to let the unemployment insurance programs uh, reports come in and the, the Senate uh, and the White House wants to see how the other stimulus programs are working before additional aid. But we are going to uh, project that there is going to be a fund for counties uh, that will be for uh, economic injury, uh, revenue loss, in included revenue losses, uh, like such as the sales tax decline that we had, and also COVID-related expenditures. So I did want to say that. Uh, at this point in time, uh, I don't know if we have any questions. Uh, but we could see uh, if there are some questions and we can take them. I really, Jeanette, I cannot see the question screen. I don't know if anybody else can. Yep, let me just uh, fix that for you, Steve. There you go. Thank you. So again, the slide deck is going to be available. Uh, uh, on the webinar, we had a request for that. Uh, we want, uh, Elliot, if you're with us, we have a request to have your email uh, contact. Uh, can you can sure. you let folks so, know if you're? Yeah, so it's it's real simple. It's e a u e r b a c h e hourback at osc dot ny dot gov. Okay. Uh, we had a question, uh, Dave, on the video lottery uh, funding. Uh, is is, uh, uh, is that the? Is that the, it, it seems that it was frozen. Can you confirm that, Dave? Yes, yeah, so it was. It was slated for a cut for the the areas outside of um, Yonkers. But that was restored by the legislature. But it is clearly subject to at least a 20% cut, you know, at the discretion of the governor going forward. So, Dave, another question: If the federal stimulus provides money for the distressed hospitals and the nursing homes, why is New York State proceeding with a sales tax intercept to fund distressed hospitals? That's a pretty good question, Jay Gazelle. Uh, what do you make of that, Dave? I, I think the there there is a lot of money on the table for, on the, the two previous federal bills, over $100 billion um, for hospitals. And it's not just for hospitals, though. It's for every single provider of health care in the country. So this money flows down all the way to a local dentist or a health care professional of any type, uh, including the institutions, hospitals and nursing homes clinics, mental health providers, public health departments for counties have been getting a share of this money. So it's a very wide pool, uh, wide distribution pool at federal money, and it doesn't nearly make up for what some of those really big institutions lost because they could do no elective surgery basically for three months. Um, it's a difficult question to figure out why New York needs more. Um, and the, the way the governor is collecting it using local sales tax to pay for what is normally a state um, engine care dish program or pool, which is usually funded by the state or other resources. They haven't really asked local taxpayers to support that before. Uh, so the question, um, uh, uh, Dave is now, can you please just review very briefly the Medicaid FMAP again, uh, the timing of that FMAP, the reconciliation, what was owed for the past four years? Um, is it, uh, uh, can you just go over the different scenarios and the, the likelihood of the counties receiving that money? Yeah, I, we don't have direct, we don't have clarification from the executive on what their plan is. We do think that they've indicated they will release the money that was in the, the the COVID bill passed in March by the federal government. That's the 6.2% increase. We think that's worth about $500 million for the counties uh, if we get through the first six months. 
So when you think about it that way, it's $250 million per quarter. So if we get another quarter on top of this, there would be another pot of funding available. Uh, and of that 500 million, about 70% is the city and the rest is uh, goes to the 57 counties uh, on the basis. As far as the, the, uh, the old ACA reconciliations that haven't been completed, we're, we're definitely about three years behind, really three and a half at this point. Um, we have no clear indication of when that is gonna be adjusted. We do expect that when they do determine what that number is, they'll do it in the weekly shares by adjusting our weekly shares going forward. And we think in that pot, there's several hundred million dollars as well for those three years of um, unreconciled funds. We were averaging a little over a hundred million a year in the years leading up to where we stopped. And as they indicated, we're three and a half to four years behind. So there could be up to 400 million uh, in that category as well, in addition to the new money provided by Congress because of COVID. But we have no good guidance on timelines for when any of those funds will be released. Okay. I believe those are all the questions uh, uh, that we have. And I'd like to thank uh, Elliot uh, and Dave. Uh, uh, there's a question here. Is NYSAC doing a resolution resolution regarding a lump sum entitlement of FMAP retro to one one that we can use? We are not, uh, Lynn Johnson from Orleans County asking that question. We are not doing a resolution uh, to that effect. If you would like uh, some assistance, we could certainly help draft that. Just email coronavirus at NYSAC.org and we can put something together for you. But we are not uh, as an entity statewide advocating for that. If that is something uh, of importance to you in your county due to cash flow issues, uh, they should uh, please send in a note to the governor's office. But the weekly share reduction, uh, you know, should be helpful uh, as we go forward. Dave, when that's a weekly share reduction retroactive to January 1st, what does that mean? Well, we're really looking at the state fiscal year as far as the weekly share reduction. So they would basically, let's say they owe, we're saying they owe counties about half a billion dollars. Um, they would make an adjustment in the weekly shares for the remainder of the state fiscal year, most likely that would provide the, the 500 million that is owed. Um, to put it in perspective, we do send more than, we send almost $140 million per week um, including New York City, to the state to pay for Medicaid. So for them to get us 500 million back over the next nine months of the state fiscal year, uh, it would probably look pretty small in a weekly share adjustment, but it, it would have some dollar value. Uh, and that's how we'll measure to some degree what they're, what they're saying that what is owed. Okay, uh, question Elliot, back to the pension. Uh, or um, contributions for uh, the next cycle. Uh, any early indication on the, uh, I think we closed March 31st and that's the window that's used to project pension calculations. I'm not sure if you had any uh, information on that or if the, uh, the controller has stated anything at this time. I don't believe that the state controller uh, has made any announcements on that. Uh, but let's just keep it at this, just to keep it general, uh, Elliot. Uh, uh, when does the state uh, make that announcement? And is there a possibility that the controller might be able to give more advance notice on what that next pension payment might be? Okay, I'm not sure if we have Elliot uh, on the line. Tracy, not sure anybody's on from the controller's office. Uh, Dave, the question, next question is, the state is holding payments for everything right now, quote, for further review. Uh, when do we think the state aid will start flowing again? I don't have a good answer for that. Um, I think if we keep up the pressure on the state, that they have released funds in the past when they were holding them for an excessive amount of time. 
Um, I th think we're in the process of um, sending another letter up on some of these social services spending that's being withheld uh, to see if we can shake that loose. Because um, there is a, a possibility that some of the funding that's being held is stuff that's specifically excluded from a cut based on the adopted budget that some public assistance programs uh, won't be subject to cuts. Uh, but those funds are seeing, still being withheld and it, it's not just state aid, they're, they're holding back federal dollars as well. So we're gonna keep up a campaign of pressure on the state to release those funds uh, as soon as they possibly can. Okay, uh, and I, I, you know, wondering if that federal stimulus funding does come in and, and does replenish state coffers, Dave, Dave, and put that state budget back in balance, uh, any cuts that were made uh, there, the law requires the, uh, the counties be made whole, does it not? Well, it's not a requirement. There's, um, there are some caveats within the state legislation that would um, give some discretion to the executive regarding if they think the federal assistance is enough to carry forward through the entire state financial plan, which goes out four years. Um, so it's unclear how they would approach those cuts that may be implemented, but then later reversed if federal money comes in or could be reversed, whether they would fully reverse them or hold something back a little bit because they don't think the federal assistance is sufficient to um, restore the state financial plan over the, um, the budget horizon, which is four years. All right, Dave, the next question, and, and we'll start wrapping this up in a few minutes here, is there, is there conversations being held in, in by the governor and the state legislature about uh, additional revenue for counties and ways that they could generate revenue? Um, should that be part of the discussion as we go forward? I think that both the Senate and the Assembly leader have, uh, have both indicated that they don't want to just accept a 20% cut and all local aid across the board. And they think that revenue, you know, I can't speak for them, but I have seen news stories where they think revenue should be, new revenue sources should be considered to help balance the state budget if need be, especially if the federal money doesn't come through. Okay, uh, Jeanette, I'll turn it back to you. I wanna thank uh, everybody, the Office of the State Controller, Dave Lucas, NISAC, and all the staff at NISAC for the work that you put in uh, for this to be a success. The slide deck will be on the NYSEC website. Jeanette, if you're with us, where would that be? Where can folks find that? You can find that at www.nysac.org backslash webinars. Everything will be posted to the website within about an hour or so. And I did want to mention that Tracy um, Hitchin Boyd from um, the Deputy Comptroller from OSC did respond to the retirement question that um, they're usually, rates are usually posted in September. So that will conclude the webinar for today. Thank you everyone for taking time out of your busy schedule to participate in this OSC NISAC event. Uh, I think it was a very informative presentation and look for our next virtual finance school presentation coming up next week. You can see a full listing of our webinars on the NYSEC website under events and webinar. Thank you for joining us today.